The first speaker at the seminar was Dr. Kaku Makanin, widely considered the godfather of xylitol research. Currently in semi-retirement, Dr. Makanin began his research career in the 60s at the University of Turku in Finland. He started his presentation with a basic explanation of the importance of the xylitol molecule's unique biochemical characteristics, highlighting its ability to chelate calcium. This is key to the understanding of how xylitol facilitates systemic absorption of calcium and also explains its potential for dental remineralization. He also spoke about xylitol as an important constituent of the biochemical pathway known as the gluconate xylulose cycle, essential for our carbohydrate metabolism. This cycle helps explain why xylitol is superior to glucose as parenteral therapy in post-operative patients. Dr. Mackinnon discussed some of the most important clinical trials and studies, starting with the famous Turku sugar studies carried out between 1972 and 1975. The Ulivieska school program showed that there was a long-term clinical benefit well after the discontinuation of xylitol use. In the Estonia school program, it was discovered that the use of xylitol candies was as effective as the use of xylitol gum. The Belize trials between 1989 and 1996 were essentially a pentitol-hexitol comparison, and xylitol was shown to be superior to sorbitol in terms of non- and anti-karyogenic effect. Dr. Mackinnon briefly mentioned the mother-child transmission studies knowing that Dr. Eva Soderling would expand on them. He then went on to present evidence produced by various studies to support the following. That there is a special relationship between xylitol and streptococcus mutans in plaque reduction. That in the presence of xylitol there is less plaque which is less adhesive and slightly more alkaline. Xylitol makes calcium and phosphates more available for remineralization, both dentally and systemically. There are some fairly recent and ongoing studies that Dr. Mackinnon brought to our attention. Dr. Peter Milgram from the University of Washington in Seattle has done much work on dosages and frequency of xylitol use. The China study has demonstrated that xylitol gums reduced levels of both strep mutans and lactobacillus more than 15 months after intervention was terminated. He also alluded to the latest studies being done in Finland with regard to the topical application of xylitol in infants. Before closing with a rather humorous look at a reference to xylitol as a panacea in Chinese traditional medicine, Dr. Mackinnon quoted one of his contemporaries, Brian Burt, Professor of Public Health at the University of Michigan. The evidence is strong enough to support the regular use of xylitol sweetened gum as a way to prevent caries, and it can be promoted as a public health preventative measure.